Moon Palace, Chapter One. There was a dinner party at Moon Palace, where a group of men, women, and children gathered around a table for a feast of Chinese traditional dishes. Shanghai-style steamed walleye, fried lemon pepper chicken, stir-fried Dungeon's crab with ginger and scallions, and crispy salted pepper jumbo prawns. The dishes were cooked by the owner, Yuan Li, and his assistant Lao Tang, who for the past week had been practicing making them. It was very important to Yuan Li that these dishes were tasty and presentable, because unlike any other party where they cooked for Americans, this party was for the owner and his wife's family and friends who had been invited to celebrate the restaurant's tenth year anniversary. Among the guests of family and friends was Mrs. Li, Yuan's mother, who sat at the head of the table, telling everyone not to be modest and to eat as much as they wanted. She was proud to be present at this occasion. She was especially proud of her son's achievement. Did you see those picture frames by the entrance? Mrs. Li asked. There are pictures of my son with the mayor and celebrities. Also, did you see the award plaque behind the counter? This place was voted for the best Chinese cuisine of the year, five times, and there are seventeen Chinese restaurants in the area. One of the female guests, who was close friend of Mrs. Li, was sitting next to her, nodded cordially, and said, "Yes, I saw them." You have done a great job raising your son to be such a fine businessman. Oh no, Yuan's mother shook her head but smiled proudly. I did a terrible job. He was just very lucky. That's all. If only his father could be here to celebrate," said another guest, who sat at the other side of Mrs. Li. Mrs. Li softly looked at this lady, and placed her hand over hers and said, "Yes." I only wish too that your brother would be here to share this joy, but I am sure he is in spirit. You are always so positive, sister-in-law. I admire your strength. Oh, I hope I do have strength, especially when I go to China. China! Both women exclaimed, and startled some of the guests, who, with mouthful of food. Stopped chewing while their eyes gazed at Mrs. Li. Yes, didn't you know? My son is going to take me back to China for a month. Who's going to take care of the business when he's gone? Mrs. Li's sister-in-law asked. Mrs. Li sighed. His wife. She looked over both of her shoulders, and then leaned her head forward and whispered. Just at the front, Lao Tang would be the one who is really in charge. Mei Ling can't manage anything. She then leaned back in the upright position and continued her normal voice. I hate doing this to my son, but I am sure they will manage without Yuan. Without Yuan, Mei Ling, who happened to catch the last sentence from her mother-in-law as she passed by, disagreed. That the restaurant could be managed without him, since the day the place was open, Yuan has always been involved. He rarely took a day off, even on Mondays, the day that the restaurant closed. He would come to the place to make sure the food and the equipment were set for the next day. <coughs> Mei Ling greeted Mrs. Li in a respectful tone. "Ma, everything all right?" Mrs. Li, who wondered if Mei Ling had heard what she just said, nodded, without looking back at her. Mrs. Li disliked her daughter-in-law. She never really accepted her because she had other plans for her son. She wanted her son to marry someone with a rich family. She even found a matchmaker to find that criteria, and she would have accomplished her goal if it wasn't for Mr. Li. Her husband, 
who had been quite fond of Mei Ling before he passed away. If Mr. Li had deceased before Yuan married Mei Ling, things would have been different for the couple. There were numerous times Mrs. Li had pulled her son aside and begged him not to marry her. Just look at her. She has no education and no money, and she is so skinny. She got no hips. She will not bear you children. You are the only child, and it is your duty to continue the Lee's family line. Ma, Mailing has a high school degree, and that is good enough for me. She is loyal, and she cares for me, and besides, Dad likes her. I am your mother. You should value my opinion more than your father's. Against Mrs. Lee's wishes, Yuan Li married Mei Ling simply because he loved her. But with this love, Yuan carried the guilt that he has to disappoint his mother, who never failed to remind him throughout his marriage. Thus, when Mrs. Li approached her son about a trip to China, her son, hoping to lessen his guilt, agreed to accompany her. As for Mei Ling, for over 13 years of her marriage to Yuan, she was used to her mother-in-law's cold shoulder. In this particular case, when Mrs. Lee replied in a distant manner, she ignored it and greeted everyone cheerfully and said, Hi, everybody. Please let me know if you need any more rice or drinks. She gave them a nod and a smile and joined a guest at the opposite end of the table next to her best friend, Louisa. Louisa, who has been friends with Mei Ling long before Mei Ling was married, overheard the guests talking about her mother-in-law. She squeezed Mei Ling's wrist and said, I didn't know your husband's going to China. Mei Ling sighed and shook her head. I didn't know either until a few days ago. A month? Really? A friend asked. I just don't know what's going to happen when he's not here, Mei Ling replied. Wearily. Hello, everyone, Yuan shouted as he came out of the kitchen and stood next to his mother. I hope you all got enough to eat. Mrs. Lee touched Yuan's forearm, smiled, and said, Son, your dishes are so delicious. Everyone seems to enjoy them. Thanks, Ma. Suddenly, a male guest with gray hair and goatee shouted, Of course it is good. I taught him everything he knows. Everyone laughed, and Yuan replied, smiling, Sure, Uncle Lu, whatever you say. Uncle Lu, husband of Yuan's aunt, who sat next to Yuan's mother, waved his hand in the air, smiled back, and said, I'm just kidding, you know that. He then stood up, raised a glass of wine to Yuan, and said, A toast to our host and hostess. Thank you for the feast, and happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, everybody shouted. 